Okay, this is Sean Callahan, watercolor artist, and this is the first segment of uh, watercolor uh, with me, uh, learning how to paint in watercolor. And uh, the first segment is going over all the materials list, which is basically me talking a lot about what supplies you need to get started in painting in watercolor. Um, you can really start with the raw materials, which will make you really uh, frustrated very quickly. And, um, and you'll think it's you, but it's actually not you. It's the, the materials you're using. So if you actually start off with the right materials, uh, it makes it much easier to learn how watercolor works. So I'm going to keep it very basic and simple and go very slow. And again, at any point, I'll ha you'll have my website, which is dogtiredstudio.net. Uh, and my email is attached to that and you can send me an email with any questions you have and I'll get back to you. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is watercolor paper. Uh, a lot of times when you go to an art supply store or just Michaels or whatever, they'll just sell you whatever they want they have because they don't know. They're not watercolor artists so they don't know what the difference is. And you don't know the difference. So you think, well, I'll just get the inexpensive paper and that'll be fine. Um, but in actuality, inexpensive watercolor paper doesn't do what it's supposed to do. So in the long run, um, you're not helping yourself because the paint doesn't work properly on that paper. So um, paper comes, watercolor paper comes in two different weights, uh, 140 pounds and 300 pounds. 300 pounds is like cardboard, it's very thick. And 300 pound paper, which is what I paint on now, um, doesn't need to be stretched. And I'm gonna talk about stretching paper in a, in a minute. Um, and then there's 140 pound paper, uh, which this is actually, this is a sheet of 140 pound paper, it's fairly light. And this paper needs to be stretched. Um, so, which we're gonna do. And um, to make it even more complicated, uh, within watercolor paper, there's different types. So there's cold press, which actually has a tooth to it. When I say tooth, it has a texture on the surface, uh, which is the most popular for watercolor artists. They like that textural feeling that they get uh, with the paint on the paper. Um, the second type is called rough. Uh, which has even got more tooth to it. So it's got a lot more texture to it than cold press does. Um, and some artists love that as well. Um, and then the third type is hot press, uh, which they actually, they press it down and it's flat and there's no tooth or texture on the surface whatsoever. And that happens to be the kind of paper that I paint on. Uh, reason being is that the, the paint stays on the surface a little bit longer. Um, it also, because of the, the I paint very realistically, um, so I don't really want any texture on the surface of the paper. I want it flat because that way I can get as real as possible and really make the painting look um, super realism when I need it to. Um, so I use hot press. Now, um, just getting started, you may, because watercolor paper is expensive and there's different kinds you can buy, um, my favorite kind and the kind I suggest you buy is Arches, which is French. Um, it is expensive, uh, but it's worth every penny. And you know, since you're just learning, you don't want to learn on cheap paper because it'll teach you how to paint wrong. So you want to learn on Arches or Fabriano is a good paper as well, but I, I am very specific with what I use, and so I use arches. Um, and you can buy sheets of arches. You can buy it in uh, bags of five or just one sheet. And you'll find it, you know, it's kind of pricey, but uh, well worth it. And so if you buy a sheet like this, uh, what we can do is we'll, we'll tear it into squares so that you can have many different pieces since you're just learning and we're doing just exercises um, and I'll teach you how to stretch that. Uh, or you can buy it in blocks. This is called a block of watercolor paper. 
And what happens is it, the, the first sheet, I've already taken it off, but this will be a black sheet when you first get it. And how you get that first sheet off is you'll see this white piece right here. You can put a butter knife right in there and you just pull it all the way around and that black cover sheet comes off. And then you'll do the same after you're done each painting or you're finished with the, this sheet and you wanna to get to the next sheet. You just put the butter knife in between the first sheet and the rest of them and you just pull it around and it pops off. These come in 20 sheets per block. And all the information you need to know is written right here. So this is 140 pounds and there's 20 sheets in it. And this happens to be hot press. So um, all the information you need to know is on the cover and each brand, so hot press, cold press and rough will have a different color that represents it. Um, they now actually have 300 pound paper in blocks, but I don't know why it's not really necessary because you don't have to stretch 300 pound paper. Um, so uh, that is the paper. And uh, the next thing I want to do is uh, tell you where you can buy it. Uh, online, if you want to buy paper and all your art supplies, uh, there are several websites that you can go to to buy these supplies. Uh, Jerry's Artorama is excellent. I use them a lot. Um, Dick Blick is another one. Cheap Joe's is another one. Pearl is another one. They're the ones that I tend to use the most. Um, and or you can go to a good art supply store and talk to an artist that happens to work there. Um, but I'm going to arm you with all the materials, the names of things that you'll need. So um, what I want to do is move the camera a bit so you can see what I'm doing here. I don't know if that's going to work or not, but we can try. So I'm going to take this piece of paper, which to say you just buy one sheet. Well, on each sheet, there's a watermark on the corner. I don't know if you can see that, but that means that that's the front. So there is actually a front and a back to every piece of paper. So what I do is I go around and I just do every six inches, I make a pencil mark. Because why, the reason I'm doing that is because I'm gonna chop this or tear this paper into small squares. So the watermark is gonna be only on two different pieces. And so for me to determine which is the front and which is the back, I like to know with a pencil mark. So it's pretty basic stuff. All I'm gonna do, because this is 140 pounds, it'll be much easier to tear. I also do this with 300 pound paper though, which is like, like I said, it's like thick cardboard. And that you have to kind of tear a little more carefully because it's so thick. But you just, you bend it in half and you go back and forth and back and forth several times because you want to get that crease nice and weak. And then what we're going to do, this will give it a deckled edge too. If you've ever heard of artists talk about, I like want a deckled edge on my paper. This is how they get that, is they tear it. Um, some artists will actually wet the crease, I don't. See if you can see this without this whole thing falling. <laughs> no. All right. There we go. Okay. So I kind of start it very carefully and then I just pull. And then I keep the ruler with the metal edge right at the edge. I usually have a T frame for this, but I it's missing. <laughs> can't seem to find it. So, okay, so now I have two pieces, and now I'm gonna fold it again. So I'm gonna turn this one sheet into four separate sheets. So I can just practice on it or use it for painting demos, um, for these workshops. So you'll do this, you can do this and actually get eight sheets if you want. 
Uh, but since you're just starting out, I think four is pretty good and you can work the whole sheet. And uh, a misnomer that you're probably gonna think is, well, it's easier to paint smaller than bigger. And it actually isn't, not in watercolor. Um, smaller actually is harder to paint. I always get asked, well, could you paint a smaller version for less money? And I always say it takes me the same amount of time, but actually it takes longer to paint smaller because I have to use smaller brushes to get the same detail that I get on a bigger piece. So size doesn't always matter. Okay, so here we go to the fourth piece. I remember I start it and then I just tear and I have that edge right at the crease so it doesn't go all the way over. Okay. So now I have four pieces, and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run this under the sink, just one sheet. I'm going to run to the bathroom in here, and all I'm doing is wetting it. Now I used to use a tub with bigger pieces of paper. You know, you don't have to soak it. Both sides, just wet it, because what watercolor paper is made of is basically cotton. So, the concept is, now, before I forget, I'm taking that pencil line and I'm putting it on a wooden board. And because the paper is wet, it's expanded, because it's cotton. So like anything, when it's wet, it absorbs the water and it, it gets bigger. So what we want to do is lay it down on our page and we have our pencil lines out. And then I have just your basic staple gun. And then every corner, about a half inch in, every few inches, I'm gonna staple gun it to the board. What this does, is it, it keeps the paper while it's this big in place. So uh, as it dries, it's gonna get tighter and tighter and tighter because the paper's gonna shrink as it dries, but the staples are gonna hold it. So um, and during this process, it does the paper will ripple and you'll think, oh God, I did it wrong, but you didn't. Uh, just let it sit. And within a few hours, when it's completely dry, it'll be tight as a drum, which is what you want. The reason being is when you start painting in watercolor and you wet the paper and you, the water is the vehicle that moves the paint. You're going to hear me say that a lot because it's really a mantra in watercolor. Wherever I put water, the paint's going to follow it. So I use a lot of water on the paper. So when I stretch a piece of paper and I add water on the paper, and then I add paint to it, if it's not stretched and held into place, the paint's gonna move and the paper's gonna ripple and it's just gonna make little puddles. So you kind of lose control of, of what you're trying to paint. So once this is completely dry, it's ready to go. So that's stretching paper. Uh, when I do this, I tend to do like four or five at a time and you can get these boards at Home Depot for free, you know, in their sample section or scraps and uh, and or just buy a board and have them cut it into different sizes so you can do a you know five or six stretch pieces at a time at different sizes so you have them available to you um, so that's that process if you don't want to do blocks now I tend to stretch paper um, when I have 140 pounds uh, when I travel I tend to use blocks uh, I've made my own blocks which we can talk about at another time um, and, but I also use 300 pound paper, which is this, this dog portrait I'm working on now. I can just tape it to the board because it's so thick, it's like cardboard, which you can't feel, but um, this isn't gonna, that's not gonna buckle on me because it's so thick. Even when I wet it, it's not gonna, bu it's not gonna buckle and bounce and the paint's not gonna move. Um, so this is our first segment of watercolor. The second segment, we'll go over some of the other materials, which is, I'll talk about pencils and brushes and paint, whether you to use tubes or cakes. 
um, what kind of palette to use. We'll do some basic brushwork, uh, and that'll be that'll be section two, uh, and then section three. I'm going to keep a surprise. All right, so I hope this helps, and um, look for segment two of the beginning of watercolor. All right. Remember, if you have any questions, just go to my website, dogtiredstudio.net, uh, and click on the email, and you can send me questions, and I will answer them. All right. Good luck out there. Bye.